All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, everyone uh, who's joined us from different uh, parts of the globe. Uh, so welcome to our monthly webinar series called Meet the Experts. Uh, this is our monthly initiative uh, where uh, uh, we from Global Customer Support host uh, our monthly webinar series across different products uh, in collaboration with our product management uh, team. Uh, so the topic uh, for today's webinar um, is uh, how do you manage your architecture deployment and performance tuning on the Informatica Enterprise Data Catalog product suite, right? Uh, you will, uh, you know, as a part of the agenda, you'll learn uh, about the Enterprise Data Catalog architecture, uh, the deployment options, what are the security considerations that you need to take into account, uh, uh, best practices around sizing recommendations and performance tuning, and finally, we will have a Q and A session. And the presenter for our uh, for the webinar today is uh, uh, Louis Noel, who is our senior product manager for uh, Enterprise Data Catalog product. Uh, before we start, uh, before we start the webinar, a couple of quick uh, housekeeping tips. Uh, today's webinar it's, it's scheduled to last uh, for an hour, uh, so we will have Q and A at the end of the uh, end, end of the session. However, uh, in case you have any questions during the course of the presentation, please uh, feel free to use the chat option uh, that's available on the Zoom webinar, uh, and uh, you can direct your questions to the panelists. So we will. Uh, we will take up those questions and respond back to you at the end of the at the end of the session. Uh, all participants will be on mute to enable the speakers to present without any interruptions. Uh, and uh, for anyone who might have missed this or not able to attend, uh, we are ensuring that this webinar is being recorded, and uh, we will post a recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel and a link for the recording will be emailed to all the registered participants of this particular webinar. Uh, you'll also receive a post uh, uh, webinar survey. Uh, and we would uh, really appreciate if you guys can take a few minutes to uh, provide your feedback, your thoughts on, uh, on the topic that we presented and also what you would like to see as part of the upcoming uh, different topics that you would like to see as part of the upcoming webinar. So, uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to uh, Lois. Lois, the floor is yours. Thank you, Patabi, uh, and um, good morning and, and good afternoon um, and good evening, every, everyone. Um, I'm uh, happy to be here today uh, to be presenting uh, for this Meet the Expert session, um, the EDC Architecture Deployment and Sizing uh, presentation. Um, so like Patabi has said, I'm uh, Louis-Noël Trapadou, uh, Senior Product Manager for the Core Metadata Group at Informatica. Um, I've been around for, for quite a while and, and will be happy to share um, uh, what um, we have in terms of uh, how we can deploy and, and, um, and tune uh, EDC. Um, so let's get started. So um, as you um, mentioned, uh, Patabi, um, for the agenda, so we'll go over the architecture, we'll go over the, the different uh, deployment options and, and uh, security considerations that you um, should have when you are starting to um, deploy EDC. Uh, I imagine that not all of you are at the same level in this journey, but uh, if uh, you already have deployed EDC, then uh, those topics will be uh, a, a refresher for, for you and, and uh, you will feel free to feel free to ask any questions if you need any clarification anyway. Um, we'll go over the, the sizing guidelines as well. Uh, so uh, making sure that um, you start, um, um, you, you, you get it right from the start. Uh, basically, um, EDC is, uh, uh, as you will see from the different components, is a complex architecture. So um, we, we need to consider that when we do the sizing. Um, and then uh, we'll go over a few uh, hints on the performance tunings and, and finally uh, we'll uh, answer your questions whether you uh, um, uh, 
uh, have them during the, the presentation of, of these uh, slides or uh, at the moment where we open the floor for everybody. All right, so let's get uh, started. Um, so I'll go over a uh, few slides of the architecture and the deployments of options. So here I want to go back to um, the EDC stack. So as I was saying um, earlier, EDC is a complex architecture because we are uh, we have designed uh, the EDC application to uh, scale over the years. So we know that this is an application that will serve multiple purpose um, in, in the future and will collect uh, metadata and uh, also data. Uh, you'll see why for uh, many uh, use cases so uh, and, and that will continue over the years while you are um, uh, ingesting more data metadata from your sources and growing your uh, your uh, information system you will want to document all the information that's there so um, to support this growth that we uh, we see uh, in every direction on the number of storage and the number of applications. We built an architecture that will uh, allow you to sustain this growth um, in, in terms of um, being able to bring the metadata uh, into the catalog, but also uh, being able to serve this metadata to your end users, as well to, as uh, serving the data for uh, external applications. So we do rely on um, you know, the more traditional aspect of uh, storing metadata, which is uh, our model repository service um, that is uh, part of the Informatica uh, platform. We do rely as well on a, um, a profile where store that uh, is uh, storing the results of uh, the, the warehouse temporarily. Uh, those two systems are databases that you can be uh, providing uh, as uh, you know, traditional uh, databases. Um, on top of that, we do uh, Need our profiling engines that we've been, um, um, you know, developing uh, over the past uh, uh, 15 uh, plus years now. Uh, that is integrated in the platform, and aside to that, to support the. Uh, the capabilities for EDC, we do need something that will allow us to store uh, data, things that we uh, were not uh, doing so much at, at Informatica before, uh, and in a manner, as I said, that should scale. So we are uh, basing the storage on um, HDFS. Uh, on top of this HDFS, there's a layer that's called HBase. Um, that serves the uh, columnar level um, storage. And we also use what uh, technology called uh, Janus Graph to be able to uh, store all the relationships between the objects that we are bringing into the catalog. We are using, uh, excuse me, we are using uh, Solar as our uh, search uh, engine. Uh, so we are building the index that are uh, in turn uh, stored on HDFS and we are using Spark uh, to uh, do all the data processing, metadata processing, um, uh, similarity discovery and all those um, uh, heavy compute uh, tasks that needs to, to happen um, within the catalog. All of that is uh, used as part of an Hadoop cluster uh, and, and uh, we will detail uh, after what um, are the options for the Hadoop clusters. Um, on top of um, those storage and execution layer, we actually are bringing uh, many different components, services uh, inside the catalog service, uh, which allow us to serve different um, task for the users, the search, the lineage, um, uh, storing the, the relationship and, and, and returning the, the relationships, um, managing uh, smart tags, managing jobs uh, in the catalog, those jobs that are uh, you know, getting to the external system, extracting the metadata um, and, and bringing it to the, to the catalog, um, evolution of, of the metadata, maintaining uh, the status of the metadata and, 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 and following how it is evolving over the time. Um, capabilities for administration, uh, of course, and, and, and then scheduling for the jobs. Um, we have on the side um, different plugins and those plugins are um, 
serve the purpose of extracting the metadata and ingesting the metadata into the catalog. Uh, one is the scanner plugin. plugin. So for each of the uh, sources that you want to scan the metadata from, we are um, uh, using the scanner plugins and we define a specific uh, plugin for each of those. Um, and then uh, we have the data profiler that will uh, execute the profile, uh, the inference analyzer for similarity, uh, computation, and then ingestion service that will load the metadata into the catalog. Uh, on top of that, we offer a suite of REST APIs that are uh, used by our own UIs, but can be also used by third party application. So if you have any application in your environments that needs to open to, to look at, at um, the metadata stored in the catalog, you can access through this uh, to this metadata using the REST API directly. You don't have to uh, use uh, manually the, the UI. The UI is only here to serve the purpose of, um, uh, of the uh, use case covered uh, for, for the user. So let's uh, deep dive a little bit. So uh, I talked briefly about the uh, uh, Hadoop cluster. So for the Hadoop cluster, we have different deployment options. One is um, the, uh, the option to deploy on an existing cluster. So if in your organization, you are heavily, uh, you have heavily deployed Hadoop at the moment, whether it's a Cloudera or Tenworks or Azure AD inside distribution, then we can um, uh, bring the services needed for the catalog onto uh, this um, cluster that you have available in your organization. And in this case, EDC will only deploy what it needs to deploy on that cluster. So we will deploy Edgebase, Solar, and Spark uh, that we, um, we maintain on, on the cluster as YARN application to allow us to provide the different services uh, for, for EDC. The other options that uh, is available to you when you're deploying EDC is to use the embedded cluster. So it's a new service as part of the Informatica platform where you can um, set up a cluster directly from uh, the administration console uh, of Informatica by just providing a set of machines with specific configurations. Uh, especially in terms of connectivity, that will serve the purpose of uh, hosting the embedded cluster that we are um, uh, OEMing uh, directly within our product. Uh, and we will deploy this cluster and we will do uh, the same deployment of applications uh, like HBase, Solar, and, and Spark as YAN, app YAN application on that cluster. So uh, that you uh, can um, just think about how you will deploy this cluster uh, and, and provision the machine. So let's get a little further on, on that um, uh, side. So when it comes to, uh, to the deployment, we will see later that we will need, uh, a, we recommend to have an infrastructure server that brings the cluster service, the catalog service and uh, the uh, cluster service as well as the metadata model repository service. Uh, we do recommend to have a separate machine for the profiling. I will explain uh, later uh, the reason why. And then uh, the set of machines that will serve for the uh, metadata cluster or embedded cluster, as we call it. In the case uh, you would have any uh, other Hadoop clusters to scan, uh, you uh, will still be able to leverage uh, those ex uh, existing cl cluster in order to push down uh, the execution of the job uh, for profiling and uh, for profiling activities of, for example, HDFS and uh, Hive um, applications. So uh, different uh, options, uh, a little comparison here. So if you are using a, an existing cluster, um, all the metadata and the data execution processing will happen on the same cluster. So um, we will extract the metadata by uh, executing tasks on this cluster and also run push down uh, jobs to execute the profiling jobs. Um, we support only specific uh, um, Cloudera and Hortonworks and, and HDSI inside version. So uh, we'll see that, um, that that's um, 
you, you will have a, a very highly dependent, uh, high dependency on between EDC and, and the clusters versions that you are running on. Uh, you will not have to add uh, hardware unless you clearly identify how much you need uh, in addition to, uh, to, to that on your existing cluster. And, and this is uh, usually recommended when uh, the, um, uh, your environment and your organization has a very high level skill uh, of people that uh, can deal with, with clusters uh, as we will have a lot of um, you know, things to do with uh, security implementation of your cluster uh, and, and so forth. Uh, on, on the other side with uh, embedded uh, uh, cluster, um, what, what we make sure is that we completely separate the processing of the metadata and the processing of uh, the, the data itself. So uh, that way, when you process the metadata, you will not impact any other jobs that your organization may run uh, on, on uh, the existing cluster. There will be no, you will have less dependency on uh, your existing cluster upgrade. So if your organization de uh, decides to upgrade specific clusters, then uh, of course we will not uh, have any dependency on that. So that makes it, makes it much easier. Um, the drawback is of course that you will uh, have to provide ahead of time uh, the, the additional hardware that we would need require to uh, deploy this cluster. So this is recommended for uh, customers who are looking on, uh, you know, optimizing, optimizing the isolation of the different environments, especially when it comes to processing metadata and uh, data. It's good also for customers who don't have the, 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 the right uh, distribution uh, that EDC supports. And it's good also if in your organization, there is no one that actually um, is uh, skilled to maintain uh, clusters. Uh, so that's um, usually what we see um, being adopted uh, uh, currently. So let's deep dive a little bit into the, the services that we have in uh, EDC. Um, so traditionally within uh, the Informatica platform, we rely of course on certain databases for the repositories of the domain, the model repository service, uh, the, the, the power, uh, the profile warehouse um, and, and the reference database. We do uh, leverage the services that um, uh, are available within the platform, which is the model repository service, the data integration service and the analysis service, as well as the content management service. So those are there um, from, from the beginning. And what we add with uh, the enterprise data catalog is adding one uh, service to maintain uh, the cluster service if you decide to go with the embedded cluster as well as one service that um, uh, serves the catalog, um, um, uh, catalog uh, task. So these catalogs now relies on uh, the services that are provided by uh, the Hadoop cluster to uh, run uh, the storage layer, the search index, and uh, the processing uh, engine Spark. And below, of course, you will uh, have all your sources that you want to access to scan the metadata from. And uh, we will um, use the uh, push down capabilities on your cluster if you want to, if you need to scan uh, Hive or HDFS uh, system. Um, we will use the, the, the push down capabilities directly on, onto that uh, system. So let's get a little further. So now I'm going uh, towards how um, the uh, scanner process happens. So here uh, you have a little bit different representation of uh, the different services that we are offer, offering within the platform. Uh, on the sides you have the different, on, on the left side, you have the different UIs that are uh, accessible um, for the administration, for the users, uh, etc. And then in the middle, you will have all the different services that we run uh, across the Informatica server, as well as the Hadoop cluster. And on the right side, uh, you see the different source system that we want to access to scan the metadata from. So when we um, 
executes a scanner, uh, there is a process that is part of the catalog service that will kick off a YARN application. This YARN application will read the configuration of the scanner from the model repository service. Once uh, we are running uh, this initial uh, application, there is uh, another container within the uh, YARN um, uh, scheduler that is spawn to actually go ahead and extract the metadata from the source systems. It can be directly connecting to the source system or leverage the EDC agents, depending on, on whether the source is directly available or not. Then the second step for, uh, in the case of relational database, we will kick off the execution of profiling jobs. This execution will go directly, will, um, this uh, request will go directly to the data integration service. And once the execution is uh, finished, then we will pull the results of the profiling jo jobs from the profile warehouse directly to the scanner and load it into what we call the commit store. This commit store is available in, um, in Edgebase. This is uh, uh, the equivalent of a staging area for metadata. And then this um, metadata that is uh, in the staging area will be um, processed by the ingestion service running on Spark. And uh, this uh, processing will, um, of course, create the relationship between the different objects and um, uh, create the uh, index and update the index uh, within Solar. A last uh, job will happen when we run the similarity discovery. We'll be uh, looking at all the objects that are already there in the catalog and create um, inference and links, additional links between the different objects that are present in the catalog. This metadata is re-ingested into the catalog and reprocessed to be finally uh, loaded into the catalog. So that's the overall process of um, uh, the scanner uh, uh, jobs. If we go now um, a little bit in detail on uh, the uh, embedded cluster deployment, um, what we uh, do ask when you are deploying uh, the embedded cluster is to provide a certain number of machines. So it can be ranged from one to six uh, based on, on the sizing recommendation. We will look at um, those recommendations a little bit uh, later. Um, so what is happening in, at deployment time? Um, the Informatica Hadoop service connects to the gateway node. So the one of the nodes that is defined as the gateway. This um, gateway will actually in turn connect to the, the different nodes that we are, are providing as worker nodes. Um, in many cases, we see that the gateway plays the role uh, as, um, as a worker node as well. So this is the reason why we see a little loop here uh, where uh, there is a, a connection that happens from the gateway node to, uh, the, the, uh, to itself. Um, at this moment, when we, all the connectivity is, is validated, uh, we will um, push all the binaries directly onto the three machines, uh, one, three or, or six machines that you are providing for um, the uh, catalog, for the cluster, sorry. We will um, deploy those binaries, uh, those are uh, basic YUM um, packages. We will deploy them uh, on each of those machines and then uh, kick off the installation of the cluster or the setup of the cluster itself, the Hadoop cluster itself. Once those operations are done, uh, that needs to be happening uh, with sudo privilege uh, enabled, we can uh, remove those sudo privileges and we can rely on the runtime um, uh, execution of the uh, Informatica cluster. Uh, so when uh, once the, the cluster is, de is deployed, the Informatica Hadoop service that uh, resides on uh, the Hadoop the Informatica server will only con communicate through REST API to the Onbury um, server, 
and monitor the infrastructure through the Unberry uh, server. So let's uh, continue on the security uh, consideration. Uh, so before you start uh, deploying EDC. Now, the, the question would be, uh, how can you make EDC secure? Uh, there will be um, a time where you bring metadata as well as bringing a data. So you can bring metadata and this metadata can already contain some uh, sensitive data. Uh, some um, network administrator consider that um, showing a map of your systems is actually uh, considered as, as, as high risk. So um, uh, securing the metadata is very important. The second part is we are also bringing data into the catalog when we profile and bring uh, value frequencies, uh, for example, in the catalog, we uh, are bringing data into uh, the catalog. So there may be cases where sensitive data are actually stored uh, within the catalog infrastructure. So those aspects need to be secured. So to be able to secure uh, the catalog, we offer different levels uh, of, um, of uh, security implementation and uh, those are complementary, uh, basically. Um, the first one is uh, the implement implementation of SSL. So allows you to make sure that all the data in transit between the, uh, uh, the user and uh, the EDC platform is encrypted and the same uh, making sure that internally between the different components of uh, the EDC infrastructure, the communication is encrypted. The next step is also to uh, make sure that you are controlling the security, the, uh, that the, the storage level is secured. For that, we support uh, Kerberos um, implementation uh, and integration where uh, the, um, all the storage and the execution will be uh, managed through uh, Kerberos authentication and that will ensure that only uh, the uh, the administrator that has access to the, the um, uh, key tabs and the credentials that are in the key tab will have access to, uh, to the storage layer. And finally, uh, to be able to control the access of the different users that are accessing the, um, the catalog, we have a set of permission, free privileges and permissions that you can manage through the different uh, administration UIs in EDC. So if we uh, look at the uh, SSL implementation, you can see between all the components that I showed earlier that um, all of the communication can be um, actually uh, uh, implemented as SSL. In many cases, it's already uh, secured when we have RPC uh, communications, uh, but when, whenever there is um, HTTP endpoint, uh, that is made available to uh, a user or to uh, a system, for, the, for example, with the REST API, you have the possibility to secure uh, with SSL those um, uh, endpoints. Uh, so those what um, this uh, diagram shows you exactly uh, where are those securization uh, possible. When it comes to Kerberos, um, we do integrate with uh, different um, KDC. We do integrate with um, MAT Kerberos as well as uh, uh, the A, uh, Active Directory Kerberos KDC. Um, in this case, we, uh, we see Kerberos implementation uh, under two different uh, ways, so uh, under two different uh, levels. So one is um, when we run the services um, for, to support the EDC functionalities. In this case, uh, we require a certain number of uh, prerequisites to be able to either uh, set up uh, and connect to an existing cluster with Kerberos or um, set up Kerberos directly on the embedded cluster. 
But uh, what is important to know is that each of the services that we will be deploying on HDFS, whether it's on the existing cluster on, or on the embedded cluster, will be secured through Kerberos and uh, everything will be, um, uh, all this securization will be enforced uh, through that. So you will have control on who can access uh, by securing basically your credentials and uh, your um, uh, key tabs. Uh, this is the uh, same representation but um, identifies through the, the scanner level. So there is there are cases where we need to connect to systems that have uh, that that are secured with Kerberos. In this case, we do need to um, um, have credentials and uh, as key tabs to be able to connect to those external systems. So this is mostly the case when we are connecting to. Uh, Hadoop systems uh, such as um, uh, Hive or HDFS, and the same uh, at the same time we ensure that uh, along the process all those uh, information remains in uh, locations that are uh, secured. So the behavior uh, that we have when Kerberos is enabled, uh, we ensure that um, all the FA HDFS location where we store data is only accessible to the users that is defined to run uh, the services. Uh, this user is, um, uh, as um, you can see, is called the, the SCN, which is the service cat catalog name. When there are data movement within the different data nodes, we ensure that uh, all the um, storage, local storage on the different data nodes is secured as well and only accessible by the users uh, that are running those, those uh, services. All the local temporary files are secured, etc. And um, any resource that we are running um, over the catalog can only be accessed uh, within uh, the uh, SCN and all those resources are also run under the SCN uh, user. So we, as I said, we consider two uh, type of authentic Kerberos um, implementation. So uh, that requires the service key tab and the scanner key tab. The service key tab allows EDC to deploy itself on the cluster and the scanner key tab allows you to uh, scan source systems that are secured with Kerberos. Let me continue on the privileges. So through uh, the administration console, you can define all the privileges uh, for the users or groups uh, to uh, the catalog at the catalog level. So basically you can define who has access to view the metadata, to be able to view uh, data and or sensitive data that are identified within the catalog. You have the capability to define who has uh, read or I mean write access to uh, the metadata in the catalog. So when we say write access is the ability to curate and augment the metadata that is uh, pulled in from, pulled from, from the different systems. And then uh, of course control the different uh, privileges for administration um, uh, and, and API access. We have a set of permissions that are also uh, possible to control from the um, uh, EDC admin UI, where you can define your permissions directly at each source system or what we call resource in uh, the catalog. The granularity for um, for database uh, goes down to table, uh, view, and synonym. So uh, whenever uh, it's it's a type. So for example, you can uh, give access. Uh, read access to uh, uh, for example to specific other groups to, to views etc um, and all those, um, those those views are controllable directly in, in the uh, EDC UI um, so as this presentation will be shared um, I uh, also added some uh, few uh, links that you can review for the security aspects uh, and uh, I will uh, let that uh, directly in the side that will be shared with you. Um, so let's jump into the sizing recommendations. 
For the sizing recommendation, we, uh, as the uh, architecture is a little bit complex, uh, what we did is uh, we identified uh, what are the popular ranges of, of um, or size that we see happening at customers when they are deploying uh, their their uh, initial environment. So uh, those um, the size we call them small, medium, and large, uh, basically. So uh, and we we initially identify those the size through the, the number of meta metadata resource and the number of objects that we are pulling from uh, the different uh, data sources but we do realize that there's another component that is very uh, also very important to take in account is the number of users that will connect to these applications uh, so here is um, the descriptions of the different um, sizing models uh, so for example if we take uh, the the medium size um, environments where uh, you have um, five uh, fifty uh, current users estimated uh, with a server, an infrastructure server that has a 24 CPU core and a 32 gigabyte RAM and 200 uh, gigabyte RAM, uh, 200 gigabyte of storage. Uh, you will be able to support the load for 50 users. And on the same um, level with uh, 200 to 400 and uh, up to 20 million uh, number of objects. This is what we recommend to have in terms of uh, one, the metadata processing. So that's the server that will act as uh, the host for the data integration service that will uh, execute the profiling jobs for the different uh, sources. And here the Hadoop cluster that um, will be necessary to be able to store the metadata compute uh, the, the search uh, and create the index and serve the index uh, capabilities, as well as uh, computing uh, all the uh, execution of the scanners and uh, the similarity uh, discovery. So those, uh, so here we have, uh, for example, for medium deployment, we have three nodes. Each of those nodes have uh, eight core uh, which sum summarized to a total of 24. Um, each of those nodes have 24 gigabyte RAM, uh, which uh, totals at, uh, 72 gigabyte RAM. And we recommend to have two, a total of two terabytes of data uh, and uh, a certain number of disks uh, that we are um, uh, that we recommend on on the, the, the cluster machines to um, allow uh, and achieve best performance. So let's dig a little bit more into the performance optimizations. So those numbers are coming from uh, how we are configure, configuring the different services out of the box. Uh, so when uh, you have seen small, medium, and large, uh, those are actually represented within the uh, EDC application and in the administration console with uh, what we call the load type and this load type has a value of low medium or large or high uh, and and for each of those uh, load type values uh, it determines what are the different settings for the different um, service that we are automatically deploying on your cluster uh, so whether we um, so the number of um, uh, CPU that we are allocating for HBase, the number of instances that we are allocating for uh, the HBase region, uh, the amount of memory that we are providing to, to that. Everything is controlled uh, through this uh, load type. There are files that are defining uh, those different settings that are uh, stored under this uh, specific directory on the Informatica server. Those can be uh, customized. Uh, usually, uh, GCS team will uh, um, very carefully provide you some changes that are uh, needed when uh, we see um, uh, that it would solve certain problems. But uh, most of the case, uh, those, those um, values do, don't require uh, don't require any customization. Uh, one thing to know if you need to change the load type. Uh, 
as there are specific changes in the number of instances of the services, for example, uh, the number of charts that we are using for solar or the number of uh, region server that we are using uh, for HBase, we do recommend uh, you to take a backup anytime you are um, uh, changing this load type setting and make sure that uh, you are re-indexing re the catalog uh, once uh, you have changed this uh, setting. Continuing uh, more into something that you, you can control uh, when I, uh, at runtime level is the amount of memory that we assign to a specific resource run. Uh, so in the resource configuration, you will see that there's always a memory option and this memory option can be again, low, medium, and high. Those, those uh, options uh, translate into uh, a certain amount of memory that we allocate to, to the execution of the resource itself. This amount of memory can be customized as well for the different values in uh, the, e, the EDC configuration. Uh, by default, they are set to one gigabyte, four gigabyte, 12 gigabyte. So if you have like, uh, of course, many um, scanners that are or resources that are set up for I, if you are running them all at the same times, uh, you may see uh, some um, some uh, execution contention on the cluster based on the uh, size of your cluster. So this is one thing to know. So usually we don't uh, change uh, the default values, but what needs to to uh, what is good to know is that when you are starting to execute, start with the the the, the lowest settings. And if you see out of memory issues uh, within the resource execution logs, then it's a good point to, to start uh, increasing that setting, uh, the memory resource memory settings to medium and then high. And if still there are issues, then you can um, increase the default values for the uh, uh, for those parameters. Um, when you do increase those values, make sure that uh, the maximum maximum allocation um, uh, option in YARN uh, configuration is also set appropriately to handle the value that you are entering for, um, for that. Profiling performance optimization. Um, so I will, uh, uh, of course, recommend to, to, to read the sizing guidelines. Um, with our um, sizing um, documentations, there's a lot of um, um, informations that are out there to tune specific parameters for the data integration service where the, um, the profiling jobs are executed. Um, we are providing a specific utility that allows you to uh, set those specific values more easily based on uh, the size of the data sets that you expect to, um, to scan. And here, again, we have separated those into small, medium, large uh, uh, data set size. And the definition is available within uh, the uh, performance and, and tuning guide. But uh, importantly, um, this specific utility is there to help you to set those uh, values in order to um, optimize the performance based on the load. Um, when you run profiling, make sure that you uh, define appropriately the sampling options. Uh, of course, if you decide to uh, to run profiling on the entire data sets, you may see performance degradations because we are not able to uh, push down the execution of the profiling to uh, the, the source. If it's a large database, for example, there are cases where we can uh, push down uh, certain sampling logics like um, auto random sampling or um, auto uh, n random, oh, sorry, n random rows, uh, or even the uh, first n rows are those options that we can uh, push down to, 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 the, to the database. Um, following that, um, um, make sure that you are selecting uh, the data domain for discovery that uh, is relevant to your requirements. Um, if in your systems you are not expecting to see any uh, PHI information, then appropriately deselect uh, the, uh, the PHI uh, group 
for uh, for discovery. If in turn you don't expect to have um, money uh, type of information or other uh, uh, specific data domains, then you can deselect them. Um, you have the possibility to always split a resource into uh, different sizes. Uh, so one thing is good to know is that um, we we do recommend in certain cases to uh, profile on Blaze when we go for um, you know relational resource that contains tables that are over uh, 100 million rows. So in those cases, um, the recommendation would be to um, to isolate those few tables that are very large to pro to profile and create a specific resource that will. Uh, profile them uh, specifically and then uh, keep the rest of the different tables from from the same uh, relation resource into a separate um, into a separate resource that will leverage a small set of parameters for the DDs. Um, so that's uh, the few recommendations that can be done uh, in terms of performance optimization for profiling. Um, again, yeah, um, I'm providing uh, a few useful links that you may want to review that will allow you to understand a little bit better what can be done in terms of uh, tuning for your uh, enterprise uh, data catalog environment. All right, so that leads me to the um, last slide. And I think, Patabi, we can open uh, the floor for uh, Q&A. Thank you so much, uh, Louis. Uh, I think uh, one of the mo most common questions we have been asked, we've been asked is, is this uh, meeting being recorded? Yes, this uh, webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with uh, everyone, uh, with all the registered participants so that you will, you will receive the time. All right, uh, going back to the questions, uh, there's one question from John. Uh, did uh, Janet's graph replace Titan as a graph database? That's right. Uh, Janus is a spin-off. Janus Graph is a spin-off of the Titan uh, project, and so we continue to use uh, Janus Graph um, as this is a maintained project, as opposed to uh, to the Titan project that has been uh, stopped. Uh, there are a couple of other questions here. Uh, so one of them uh, from Kugan Raja. Uh, uh, what does what does the slider application mean, and uh, what is the difference between the HBase Solar application and Spark? So slider is um, a component uh, that is used within the the, um, uh, the open source community that allows you to deploy a package application on a, a scheduler framework, and the one that we are using is Yarn. So we do uh, deploy, deploy edge base within uh, using slider uh, on the cluster. So uh, let me be a little bit more precise. When we do deploy edge base on uh, Yarn, we need to request multiple containers to be able to execute the edge base master the, uh, and the different edge base region server. Slider provides us the infrastructure that allows us to request those different containers on them. Now, the difference between uh, EdgeBase, Solar, and Spark application. So, EdgeBase uh, allows us to store the raw metadata uh, and that we use to uh, show different objects within the, the catalog. Solar allows us to serve functionalities for searching. So we index and store the index within Solar, and Solar provides us um, APIs that allows us to uh, quickly search uh, and use fuzzy logic for searching. And Spark is the processing engine that moves the data from uh, the different um, uh, storage area within HBase. Um, there's another question coming in uh, regarding the embedded Hadoop. Uh, so currently the embedded Hadoop is not HA uh, as of now. Are there any plans uh, uh, for making it HA in the, in the future? Right, so so, the, um, so far uh, the embedded cluster has not been HA for a reason is that Ambari server is uh, not HA in the version that we were using. 
uh, moving forward in um, in um, uh, HDP 3.1, um, the capability for HF on, on by server is being added. So as soon as we will uh, be integrating with um, HDP 3.1, we will be able to provide full uh, HA capabilities for the embedded cluster. Um, another question coming in from Bernard. Uh, uh, Bernard, thanks for the appreciation. They, he says that you know it's a very interesting presentation on the topic. Uh, a question from him is, uh, why is the REST API mainly used for communication between the catalog UI and uh, metadata storage? Are there more performant ways to interact? So we did choose to um, use the REST API because we want to make sure that our uh, all users can have uh, access to the same capabilities as um, we access through the UI. So anything that you can do in the UI is also um, uh, available through the, the REST API. The goal is to make sure that we are creating a platform that is open and uh, that can be reused for and within your applications in uh, your uh, ecosystem. There will be many cases where um, other applications need to have access to metadata. We do ourselves have other applications like secure at source, like the enterprise data preparation tool um, that's and uh, that are leveraging directly those REST API. So um, EDC has a core that provides those REST API and then we see many applications that will leverage the uh, metadata stored in this catalog. We could have um, used just we could have used other ways to communicate with the the, the back end, but um, again uh, we want to make sure that we are offering the same capabilities uh, as as we have in the UI. So to that end, we prefer uh, sticking with um, the REST API. Uh, there's another question around the unstructured database example. Um, the IMS. Uh, needs to be scanned via a custom resource. Uh, so the question is, uh, are there any plans for a dedicated uh, resource type for them in future? Uh, at the moment, IMS is, is uh, being uh, reviewed for and, and planned as a source. Uh, but it, it's not in a high priority. We do have uh, actually partners that allows us to uh, access those systems, those type of systems. And uh, we do recommend customers to, to work with those partner, partners to extract the metadata and uh, load it as a custom resource. Got it. Uh, there's another question which is coming on for the existing clusters, right? Catalog service is already installed using the HBase environment. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a confusing question here. Yeah? For the existing cluster, they're asking whether catalog service is using the installed HBase environment, uh, or does it create its own uh, HBase environment during execution? In um, in all cases, whether HBase is present or not in the cluster, in the existing cluster, we will always deploy our own um, HBase instance. There is a reason for that. Uh, we are um, going through a lot of certification with specific versions of HBase and to facilitate um, the number of combination that we would need to actually uh, support, we deploy our own version of HBase. Uh, this is much simpler uh, than uh, leveraging the HBase that is uh, um, running on the ex existing cluster. And I think it's more of a follow-up. Can we access the following results so the profiling results stored in HBase, or is it done only through the REST API and the ingestion job? The profiling results can be uh, accessed through the REST API. When you look at a specific um, objects through the REST API, you can have access directly to the results that are uh, shown in the in the UI. Okay. A uh, couple of uh, follow-up questions on the REST API, uh, Lois. Uh, do you plan to open more REST API commands for the internal section, uh, from the internal section to the default section that's for uh, customers? And uh, why has Informatica chosen uh, 
to use MITI for scanning power centers instead of its own technology. All right. So for the first question, yes, we will continue to announce the REST API uh, that are publicly available or fully supported. Um, right now, we do have also customers that are using inter the, the internal sections, uh, REST APIs. Um, of course, we, we do not recommend that, but uh, there have, have been cases where um, to, to solve certain problems, we um, uh, uh, Customers have been doing so, uh, so we will make them uh, fully uh, supported in the future. Uh, regarding yeah. MITI, uh, so we, we've been partner, partnering with MITI uh, for, for a long time. Uh, MITI is today, uh, has today a, a long uh, experience in metadata extraction, so we will continue to partner with, with MITI, uh, but uh, we also are selectively uh, choosing which scanner we are building with METI or uh, building ourselves. Not all of our scanners are actually uh, leveraging METI. Uh, there are cases where we can reuse what we have for other um, systems and other connectivity that we have for other systems like our uh, platform or uh, our um, cloud integration uh, platform as well. So we, in, in those cases, we are um, going after different ways to, um, um, to, get, to get the metadata from the systems. Perfect. I think we have one last question uh, here. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, around, uh, it's around lineage for dynamic mapping is supported in EDC. Uh, is this, if the source has control files, especially uh, for while reading data from the from the source. So that that depends on the source system, of course. Uh, for mm -hmm. a system like um, uh, BDM, so if you're developing uh, an application and a mapping, a dynamic mapping in BDM, we do support generating uh, the lineage with uh, the fact that you are providing values for those. Uh, for, for, for the dynamic aspect. Uh, what we do in most cases is that we generate the runtime version of the mapping before extracting that metadata and then generate the metadata and uh, load it into the catalog. Got it. And uh, one last question before we wrap up, uh, are there any plans to implement a scanner for IDERA, ER and uh, Studio? Um, there are, uh, it's also under planning. Uh, I, we don't have any timeline uh, at the moment for availability of, of this um, system for scanning, uh, but uh, I can uh, work with Jay Victor uh, on, on timeline. Perfect. All right, I think uh, that would be the end of our uh, Q&A session. I know there are still a few questions that are coming in. Uh, probably we will, when we post this uh, recording on the YouTube uh, channel, uh, we'll also make sure that you know, some of those questions that are not answered uh, can, can be uh, recorded in there. But uh, Louis, you know, uh, thank you so much for a very insightful and informative uh, webinar. I'm sure our customers appreciate uh, the amount of uh, technical knowledge, in, in, uh, knowledge and information that has gone into uh, this particular presentation. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the participants uh, who joined this uh, webinar. Thank you, guys. Uh, have a good rest of the week. Thank you.